Muchachos y muchachas, the Canadian convoy seems to dig their heels in and stand their ground as many other people are growing in their support in Canada, in the United States, around the world, as it seems to be also inspiring some other similar things that might be happening. But we don't know that yet. But what we do know is that despite the support, there is some backlash as well as some pushback on the convoy, including GoFundMe seizing their funds, not refunding the uh, donators, and as well as the establishment, the local government, the law enforcement that also seems to be conspiring against the convoy to stop them in their efforts. Will they stop? Will they continue? I think they will. Stay right there. We're going to go through it. Friends, we live in a world that's slipping away into constant uncertainty and danger. Imagine if something unthinkable happens tomorrow within hours, global supply chains can break down and never start up again. We've learned that lesson the hard way. And that means the smart thing to do is to prepare for the worst, even if the peanut butter hasn't hit the fan yet. You should store emergency food that can get you through whatever happens next. And we highly recommend My Patriot Supply, America's largest emergency preparedness company. Act now and save $50 off their popular four-week emergency food kits, which contains an abundance of delicious food that provides over 2,000 calories a day. Every person in your family should have at least one of these. Your shipment will arrive quickly in unmarked boxes. Go to preparewithnatalie.com and save $50 on each four-week supply food food kit you purchase. That's preparewithnatalie.com to avoid being a victim and survive the coming uncertainty. Preparewithnatalie.com. All right. So what's going on in the Canadian convoy? What is happening in regards to the support as well as the establishment coming against these protesters? And believe me, they are coming against these protesters. Let's start off with the donation. So recently it was reported or as we knew, there was some fundraising going on in regards to the protesters. I think they fundraised upwards, I believe, $10 million or a little bit over that at GoFundMe. But we all know what GoFundMe does when it comes to causes that are being supported that go against the mainstream narrative. They tend to seize the funds or stop the, the fundraising in regards to what they're doing it for. And I don't know why people keep using GoFundMe. To be honest with you, I would probably use the latter, which we'll mention. Freedom Convoy, re ra they're raising $2 million. I heard that it's upward like $4 million. At this point, it might be more. So hopefully they do get the, regain that, that donation back. Freedom Convoy raises $2 million on GoSiv. Send Go, sorry, go, give Send Go after GoFundMe removes campaign. A new fundraising appeal for Canadian truckers protesting the poke in the arm mandates has already raised millions of dollars after GoFundMe halted the campaign on its website. A new appeal from the Canadian F Freedom Convoy has raised more than $2.1 million out of $16,000 target on platform go, give Send Go after GoFundMe halted the campaign after the police in Ottawa raised concerns of violence. This included one anonymous donor giving the truckers $215,000 on the Now platform. The original GoFundMe appeal raised an estimated $9 million before the website manager said it would withhold money donated to support the truckers. So I also, I, I don't see it as, a, as I glance through this, but I also know that it's apparent that GoFundMe not only seized the $9 million from the fundraising campaign, but they aren't ref refunding that back to the donators. They're actually seizing the funds and distributing it back to nonprofits they deem, I guess, receivable. Unless the donators, if so, if you are a donator of this, unless they go personally request that their funds be refunded back to them originally. To me, that's a form of theft. And I know that our attorney here in Texas, Ken Paxton, actually 
I think he's forming some sort of civil litigation or some some litigation against that, especially if you're a Texan donator, uh, because it, it is a form of theft. So it seems to be that they did uh, regain some traction back on Give, Send, Go, which to me is a good some good news. Now, let's take a look at the establishment and how they're coming against the convoy. Now, the court. It's granting injunction to silence honking in downtown Ottawa for 10 days. So as you guys see uh, some of those arrivals, a lot of the truckers, they were honking their horns. They're now dubbing this the honkening. And, you know, uh, I could I could see I could see the disturbance uh, that it could cause. But, you know, it's it's now leaving what this is. Kind of illustrating is that this is now reaching new levels of shutdown, if you will. An Ottawa judge has granted an interim injunction seeking to silence the honking horns that have plagued residents of downtown Ottawa for the past 11 days. Tooting a horn is not an, only an expression of great thought, of, I'm aware of, said Justice Hugh McLean during a court hearing in Ottawa Monday. The temporary injunction order is effective immediately and is meant to silence the horns all hours for the next 10 days. Lawyer Paul Champ said air horns and train horns are blasted at sound levels of 105 to 120 decibels for prolonged periods and can cause permanent hearing damage. He says every hour this goes by, there is harm to people in Central Town. He uh, told the in, told the hearing. Keith Wilson, a lawyer representing the three protest organizers named in the suit, argued that his clients Tamara Litch, Benjamin Ditcher, and Chris Barber are not personally responsible for the noise. He also said that the Ottawa is experiencing a grassroots protest against the planned apocalypse measures. He is quoted saying, there is more evidence before you that downtown Ottawa residents don't feel that they're being harmed, and this is part of a democratic process, he said. The judge said that while participants have the right to protest, taking their own horns away would not rob them of that right. The request of an injunction came out of a proposed class action lawsuit filed with the Ontario Superior Court of Justice on Friday by lawyer Champ on behalf of his clients, uh, Zexi Lee and 21-year-old public servant. It sought an injunction prohibiting the defendants or any other participant in the anti poke in the arm mandate to convoy protest from using vehicle horns in the vicinity of downtown. The uh, motion calls for the injunction to cover the zone north of Queensway, the city's main east artery. So, I mean, the, the article did mention it that I have seen footage of more civilians and more residents of Ottawa and Canada, you know, those citizens of Canada being very, very supportive to the point where a lot of other households are doing things like baking goods, making sandwiches, supporting them in many ways. So what is the real truth here? Right. I think that maybe there is a minority, although, like, like I said, I just being level minded, I could see how it could become a disturbance. If you know, you live downtown and there's constant honking and loud horns. I don't know. Um, yeah, if, if there's anything, if there's anything about that, I can say I, I could probably just empathize with the general uh, public who might be disturbed by that. But that's not to say that they should be taken away their right to protest. And obviously, what is the bigger thing at stake here? Because what what about those residents that do live downtown and have to experience a honking, but they still they still support the protest? Maybe that's something that they should, you know, leverage is that there are residents that actually support this despite the honking. And it's a bit it's a bigger idea, right? It's bigger than the honking. It's bigger. It's it's about your right to live a free life without a government impending their decisions on you and what you want to do with your health. Now, they're taking this a bit further. They're actually raiding some of these camps uh, of these protesters. So again, coming from cbc.ca, police raid on Ottawa protest camp is the strongest show of enforcement yet. Let's just take a look at this video here. Travis Ganraj was at the site as police moved through earlier. And Travis, take us through what happened tonight. 
Yeah, that's right, Ian. We certainly are seeing enforcement ramp up on this 10th day of the demonstration. There have been several arrests that Ottawa police have just announced, seven arrests in total, uh, and two of those arrests were at that scene that you were just talking about, at that staging site where a lot of the protesters were uh, bringing fuel into town. That's where they brought the fuel initially, and then they would distribute it to downtown. So police say two people uh, at that baseball parking lot were arrested and charged with mischief. Also, That's all you really have to know. That's all you really have to know. So let me just explain here. So protesters, uh, first of all, they're, conf they're confiscating, the law enforcement is confiscating fuel. They're confiscating their gas. And upon learning of this, this is just signifying and symbolic that there is a lot of support out there. Not only are they baking them goods, making them food, delivering hot food to them, but also, you know, people are actually uh, refueling these these truckers by by bringing them fuel. Now, law enforcement out there are now dubbing this as mischief, that you're mischievous and you're going to get arrested if you bring them fuel. And this is where it's taking the turn. Dozens of heavily armed police officers descended Sunday night on a baseball stadium parking lot that's been serving as a staging area for the protesters in downtown core. Police removed vehicles, at least one tanker of fuel that was stored at the Coventry uh, road lot. Ottawa police later announced that they had arrested people at the site with other arrests elsewhere that linked to protest activity. About 10 protesters in reflective vests stood firm on the front of fuel supplies that were stored toward the southern, southern end of the lot. Sniper stood guard at the roof of the stadium and the hotel on either side of the parking lot as police moved through the camp. Protesters yelled shame, shame and on the wrong side of history at the officers as police moved to, into act. One protester was heard saying this can't end well. There have been no reports of injuries. So which also signifies that these are pro these are peaceful protests. Nobody is burning down anything. Nobody is causing destruction. This is peaceful. People are peacefully protesting and people often repeat that just to, you know, ingrain that in our heads that this is the way you're supposed to protest, not burn things down, not smash windows, not loot. That's not the way you do it. And these people are actually doing it right. They're still to believe more fuel on other supplies, such as food stored in parking lot, which the volunteers have been shuttling the protesters jamming the so-called red zone around the Parliament Hill. Ottawa police said Sunday that that would be stopping these deliveries. Protesters say they plan to continue bringing cans of fuel downtown. Beyond the... The explicit Trudeau flags, Castro, as I like to call him, and the reports of journalists being harassed. Convoy organizers are promoting the Memorandum of Understanding, calling the Senate and the Governor General in collaboration with the Committee of Citizens to issue edicts to federal, provincial, and municipal governments to repeal all the poke in the arm related restrictions. If the Senate and Governor, Governor De General decline to go along with the plan, the memo says they're expected to resign. There's no longer taking fuel to protesters in Confederation Park across the city hall, which police said had been cleared and fenced off. A wooden pop up restaurant has moved from the park to the Coventry lot earlier Sunday. And uh, they are doing this where they are putting, you can see here in this uh, picture here, where they're popping up with trailers of, of, you know, smokers and food tents, you know, food huts, all these things to support. Again, just signifying that there is more support outweighing people who are actually against this convoy. Police have conceded in retrospect, allowing trucks to park in the city-owned RCTGT. I'm sorry, RCGT Park east of downtown. That is a key area of what they call an unprecedented protest. When they offered the lot to the demonstrators more than a week ago, the idea was to get the trucks out of town downtown. But protesters soon organized themselves to a supply camp, compete complete with large tents for food, and recently the addition of three working saunas. So continued on within this report, it is also reported that they need a staffing boost because of this, because of the replenishing, the, the continual support of the convoy. The Ottawa police chief wants staffing boosted as protesters continue to refuel. 
Ottawa's mayor says 400 to 500 large trucks remain in the downtown core. Police have made 20 protest-related arrests since Friday, says Chief Peter Slowly, and he's saying that he needs at least 1,800 more police and civilian personnel. Uh, continue off. So the light rail is the only transit through downtown Ottawa because it is blocked. Police Chief Peter Soli has told a meeting of Ottawa City Council that he needs an influx of almost 2,000 police officers and civilians to turn up the heat on the ongoing protest in the city's downtown core. City's uh, councillors are gathering Monday afternoon for a special meeting that includes more information on police needs and is expected to include future review of city response. Uh, so they basically don't have enough staff to, you know, comp compete with the protesters, which, by the way, I will repeat, have been very peaceful. At noon on Monday, slowly told reporters that the new police strategy announced Friday helped make this weekend's protest smaller. And compared to the previous weekend, he said police are currently making incremental progress towards ending the demonstration. But more help will turn up the heat on protesters and end it more quickly. What exactly are you planning to do against these protesters that have done nothing to commit violence against anybody? All they're doing is standing their ground. That's what we see. We see people who are cleaning up the area, right? You like they might have a gathering, but they're cleaning up their parties. They're cleaning up after themselves. They're throwing away their trash. They're even doing the further courtesy of putting the trash out for the pickup to happen. He went to tell city councilors at the meeting who wants 1,800 more police and civilian workers to be able to take meaningful action, which also matches 2,100 police and civilian staff currently employed at the Ottawa Police Service. So, you know, they, they seem to be caught. They can't really do much about all this support. They can't seem to do much to turn off the impending convoy and this and this continues to inspire more and more people around the world you know we i think i saw italy germany uh even rumors of the u.s also possibly doing something uh to dc you know uh, uh meaning that they're going to form a convoy to travel to dc but i don't know this this these are just rumors who knows what's going to happen but all we can do is see and um you know stop using gofundme stop stop doing that Especially, you know, if you have good efforts out there to stop doing that. Anyway, that is the report about Canada and their convoy and, you know, the support versus the impending backlash that they want to form against the convoy. But again, like I said, there's a lot more peaceful support than we see them trying to um, push back on. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for your support please be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below be sure to like share subscribe and as always i appreciate you and i love you i will catch you guys in the next episode